now we want to do some shading analysis so what do we need to know and to do um, to check uh, the shading conditions uh, for a pv system which is mounted on a roof or which is a ground mounted so first of all let's uh, have this situation we have a house uh, oriented to the south and then there's this uh, tree so an obstacle which might um, produce uh, that, that we get a shadow from this tree and um, so first of all um, let's think about this situation we have uh, eight modules we want to install on this roof each module consists of uh, two bypass diets so it's a very simple uh, situation we have this module um, then we have the cells and then we have uh, two of these uh, bypass diets one and two which uh, helps us to reduce the losses um, and what we want to do is now let's mount these uh, these modules uh, on the one hand uh, vertically on the roof and on the other hand let's move, uh, install them horizontally mounted and check what is the consequence if this tree um, or if we get a shadow of this of this tree on our roof. So this is our module with these two bypass diets and now let's first start with the vertically uh, mounted situation so that we have this uh, module it's uh, module number one uh, number two three and four so four mounted uh, vertically mounted and then we have a second row again vertically mounted what does this mean so the bypass diets are somewhere here at the top or at the bottom doesn't matter and uh, what what do we get in in this case with the, with with these uh, uh, modules? Now we have uh, the situation that we have a shadow uh, coming from this uh, tree. So uh, let's think about this is the the, the, the shadow of, of the tree that we have this this shadow here, something like like this that we have this here and the, somewhere over here. So that is that is that is the shadow we get. So you see. Um, that the uh, modules are covered and uh, in this case what do we have we have uh, now let's say uh, in this case uh, five or even six uh, bypass diets are uh, shaded so this we have here this module this has uh, two uh, more uh, bypass diets which are sh shaded here uh, the same situation here uh, let's say this is just just the left one not the right one so the right one is not shaded so in this case we have five bypass diets are shaded in total we have as i said add modules and thus we have uh, 16 bypass diets and five of these diets are shaded uh, due to this uh, vertically mounted uh, situation so that's the vertically mounted vertically mounted so five bypass diets are shaded so the, the energy loss in this case uh, as with five uh, shaded bypass diets is about let's say 30 31 percent so the energy loss is rather large in this case energy loss it's about 30 percent something like this one about this now um can we reduce this energy loss just with uh, switching the situation or just turning around the module that we don't uh, mount them vertically but horizontally? Uh, and let's think about this situation on the uh, second uh, example. So now they are horizontally mounted. Horizontally mounted. So what does it mean? We just Turn them around by 90 degrees, and then we have one module, uh, the second module, the third module, and the fourth module, and then second row. Of course, the modules have the same size. Now the uh, bypass diodes are located on the right hand side. And of course, what we get is we get the same shadow at noon. Of course, not a perfect situation for this uh, PV system. So we have something like this. So this is the, again the shadow, and we are somewhere here. So, so that might be the shadow of our tree. 
So in this case now we just have uh, two or even uh, three bypass dyes uh, shaded. Um, so of course this, uh, you see here for example, this, this module is right outside of this, of this uh, shadow. So in this case we would just have two. Uh, later in the afternoon, perhaps this, if the shadow uh, moves, the sun uh, moves across the horizon, so the shadow moves uh, in, in this direction, of course. Uh, so the shadow moves, but they are never more than uh, two or three uh, bypass dyes are shaded. So we have now two or let's say three bypass dyes shaded. Dyes are shaded. Of 16, um, so that gives us an energy loss of about it's about yeah, let's say 12 or even uh, let's say perhaps 18 percent, so something like this. So we are just reduced uh, the energy loss by turning around uh, the modules. Uh, so in the first case, just uh, if they are not perfectly mounted, uh, we have a higher loss due to the shadow coming from the tree. Uh, in the second uh, case, we redu reduced uh, the shadow by or the losses by a half uh, just by turning around the modules. And this is very important that you can improve the uh, the energy yield of your system by optimization by thinking about what is the best uh, mounting condition for the modules. Perhaps you uh, say, okay, I, I don't install a module which might be highly covered by uh, by a shadow if there's a chimney, for example. Um, to reduce the losses um, uh, from the technical and, of course, from the economical point of view. Next, we want to have a look at the situation if the system is uh, ground mounted or mounted on a flat roof. So, what you can see here, uh, we have in this case two module rows which are mounted beneath each other. Uh, and even you can, can see the shadows coming from the front row and which might cover the back row or the lower modules of the back row. And uh, now we, we will think about what is the situation uh, regarding this the shadows we get. So uh, we need to define uh, some angles and uh, some distances. So uh, what we have is we have the distance of the module row. So that is the distance from the uh, bottom edge of the module, so that's the distance uh, d. Um, then we have uh, the the length of the modules, or this module row in this case, that is uh, b. Uh, we have the height of this of these modules, so that is the height uh, from the bottom and the the, the, the top edge, so that's uh, h. And what we finally need are two angles. On the one hand, the elevation angle beta um, of uh, or the tilt uh, angle of the module row, and of course, then we have this uh, angle, the shading angle. So that is this angle from the bottom edge of the, uh, the the top edge of the front row and the bottom edge of the back row, and that is the the angle gamma. And uh, what we want to know is what is on the one hand or what we define is the um, area use factor f. So f is the ratio of b over d. So this represents uh, the distance uh, or the, the, the use of modules, the number of rows you have on your um, flat roof or if the system is ground mounted. Um, that you um, have different um, situations. Uh, for example, f if f is one, then uh, the modules would be close to each other, um, and uh, the smaller f is, the larger the distance between the module rows uh, would be. Uh, and what we want to know is what is uh, well, how does this uh, factor f uh, depend on these angles? And what you can just do is you can just use the law of sine um, that you know and we just add one angle uh, to our diagram over there alpha and what we know is that sine of alpha over d is sine of gamma over b because we have here that's that's of course also b 
in this case. So we have B and Gummer and uh, sine of alpha and uh, D and alpha of course is 180 degrees minus beta minus gamma so that's uh, just a, a triangle and that gives us um, the or the, the the factor f gives us this ratio directly because now we can can say okay b over d there's the ratio b over d um, that gives us of course a sign of uh, gamma over sign of Alpha and then in this case, of course, the the, the angle beta is, is constant. Uh, this um, tilt angle of the modules, but the shading angle, um, and and of course the, the shading angle as, as well is is constant. Um, the sun moves across the, um, the horizon, and then of course the this, the shadows here move in the morning with longer shadows. Uh, as the elevation angle is smaller and then we get shorter um, shadows uh, at noon and then in the afternoon again the, the length of the shadows increases and we get we might get shadows here at the bottom of this uh, of this back, uh, back row and um, of course what you can then derive is what are uh, the losses we get under these uh, conditions what are the shading losses we uh, get uh, under these uh, circumstances? So let's make a diagram that we have on the one hand uh, the losses uh, on the y-axis. So that are the shading losses. Losses in percentage. And then uh, let's think about the shading angle on the x-axis. So somewhere here um, we, we draw the, the shading angle gamma just defined and um, let's see what will happen so that's gamma and uh, that's the shading angle so 5 degrees 10 degrees uh, 15 degrees and we're here 20 25 and 30 degrees and then the losses are uh, let's say that's 5%, uh, 10%, 15%, and uh, 20%. And now what we can uh, do is we we can analyze by, for example, using the simulation tool, um, what are the losses uh, regarding these, uh, these uh, tilt angle beta. So... Um, we change gamma and we uh, look at the situation if we have different uh, uh, tilt angles beta. Uh, for example, let's start with a typical inclination or tilt angle of 30 degrees, which is uh, used in general in, in Central Europe. Um, and that gives us um, a slope of curve that, of course, the smaller the gamma is, the larger the distance is, uh, or this factor F is. So the distance of the module. So what we get is under these conditions, we get something like uh, like this. So that at, at 50%, we are somewhere here. And at 30 degrees, uh, so a very high uh, shading angle, we are somewhere here. So that is, that is the slope of this curve. So we get the losses which are increasing. And then we are somewhere somewhere here. So that is, that's the situation for... Uh, beta is 30 degrees. If the, our inclination angle is even smaller, just 15 uh, degrees, we get different uh, situations. So under uh, the situation that we have just 15 degrees, so just one half, we are somewhere here that we have these losses. And then at 30 degrees, we are about at 12% of, of loss. So somewhere here, so slightly smaller. So that's beta is... 15 degrees and of course you need to remind that this uh, slope of curves depends on your uh, location uh, if you are closer to the equator of course you get a different slope of curve um, that uh, under uh, for example if you do this uh, for uh, southern spain for example um, the situation looks uh, different um, for example let's just add this uh, this uh, slope of or this characteristic um, 
for a 30 degrees inclination angle of the modules. So what do we get is, is different slope of curve to the situation for southern space uh, Spain that we get uh, at uh, 15 degrees we are somewhere here and at uh, 30 degrees we have an increase so we are somewhere so the curve is flat and then it increases over there so that's that's the situation we have between 30 degrees and that's in, in Spain or southern Spain, and the blue curves represent a Central Europe like uh, Germany, Netherlands, etc. So that is the situation, and you have to keep this in mind. Of course, um, you have um, restrictions regarding the space you can use for a ground mounted system, and uh, this uh, must be considered uh, how to uh, find perfect uh, setup of, of your PV system and uh, how to, to build up uh, your, your module rows. Next, we want to identify obstacles which are close to your um, PV system location or the location you want to use to install a new PV system. Uh, what you should do is you should take some uh, pictures of the location. So in this case, you see uh, PV modules uh, installed on a, on a roof. Um, you see this is the uh, orientation to the south, so the uh, building is oriented right to the south. And what you now do is, uh, first of all, you, you need to identify possible obstacles. In this case, of course, these small chimneys um, are or might be a problem. And of course, here we have a tree which might cause a problem. And what you do is, uh, by using these uh, pictures uh, taken um, on the roof or using a drone that you uh, add an angle grid and uh, that you know the, this is the orientation 180 degrees uh, so that's the azimuth angle and uh, then we add the, the elevation angle and then we can derive by using these, these grids so slightly slope curves um, that under these conditions, so that this is 150 degrees, and this is, uh, let's say, 210 degrees, so to the uh, east and to the west. Uh, and then you can define what are possible obstacles, what's about the, uh, what's about the hills uh, at the horizon. Uh, do we get shadows that the sun might be hidden beneath these um, hills uh, in, in wintertime, not in summertime, that's no problem, but in wintertime, when the elevation angle of the sun is rather small, uh, what does it mean? So use this uh, angle grid. Uh, you can just lay above your uh, or on your photo and do the analysis and um, draw these uh, sketch or the draw a sketch that you analyze the obstacles like the roof we have here, the tree, the tree here. Of course, you need to know the distance, but that helps you to identify possible problems. In this case, there are no, uh, no problems as uh, one of the trees are too small and the height of the roofs is not uh, that high that we might get a problem in, in this case. But what you then do is you transfer this information to, your, uh, to this um, sun path diagram. We have uh, seen in one of the first uh, lessons um, so you see this is uh, the sun path uh, diagram for uh, location in Central Europe, for example. So you see on the one hand, uh, these blue curves represent the, the sun path uh, in the different months, so January or of course November, uh, February, etc. And then we have this uh, situation in, in summertime, so on the elevation angle of uh, 64 uh, degrees. And on the other hand, what we have is we have a different uh, Time. So in the morning, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, and then in the afternoon, 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m. So where is the sun under uh, on its pathway uh, in, the, in the different seasons? And then what you do is, or what you add is, you add some, or you add your, your obstacles. Uh, so let's say you have, for example, a tree, which might be, you've seen this um, before, we've had this, this tree somewhere here. And uh, that's that's our tree, and that tree we, we get a shadow of coming from this tree, or if the sun is hidden, 
Uh, that would mean, of course, in this case, that in the morning, even in, in winter time, there is no problem regarding uh, any shadow. And then from 11 a.m. to, let's say, 3 p.m., we get shadow, so the sun is covered or hidden behind this tree in uh, December, January, February. Uh, and then the end of February, we, we get the sun or the sun rises uh, behind this tree. We don't get any coverage. And we don't have shadows. So you have to keep this in mind if you want to uh, um, uh, calculate or estimate the energy yield. Uh, you have a time period uh, of the day and in different months that uh, the sun is hidden behind this tree and we get um, shadows, we get energy losses. And you can use this information uh, in a simulation tool to uh, derive uh, the, the losses regarding uh, uh, the, the, the shadows. So you need uh, several uh, information. On the one hand, of course, you always need um, alpha, so the azimuth angle uh, of your uh, object. Where is it located um, regarding the orientation of your uh, system? Then, of course, we have gamma. This is the elevation angle of the sun. Elevation angle. So what you do is... Uh, Think about the the situation with the house. We have the house uh, with this with this roof. So that is that's the roof of our house, and here we want to install our uh, PV system, and then we have a tree somewhere here. So that is our tree, and what we need to know is on the one of course the distance. So we. Are, Taking the bottom edge of our PV system, and then we derive uh, the distance to to this uh, obstacle. Uh, of course, on the one hand, regarding let's say this is the the orientation to the south, so the tree is located somewhere to the west. So what is this uh, this angle alpha um, in degrees? So this azimuth angle, uh, where is the uh, tree located? And on the other hand, we need to know what is uh, this uh, elevation angle gamma, so the height. So what we need to know is uh, what is what is the, the, the height of this uh, tree. So let's say uh, this is the height of the tree, the overall height h. What we now need to just to know is what is, let's say, h1 and h2. Uh, so regarding uh, the, the location of your PV system on the roof, um, as we have a, a height uh, of the roof, and what we then get is that uh, tangents of uh, gamma, that's uh, H2 over D, so we can derive this uh, elevation angle um, gamma. And that's, that's uh, you, you need to do this for all the obstacles to identify the position um, and all these uh, angles that you can add these information to your sun path diagram and then derive the energy losses which might occur. And finally, what you should do is you should take um, a bird's view a picture of your system. Um, you can use satellite uh, photos or photos taken from planes which are provided um, uh, in the internet or of course what you can do is you can use a drone to take uh, this bird's eye view and identify the obstacles. So in this case, again, we have our PV system. Um, in our case, uh, now the orientation that's uh, to the top, that's south. And um, now what we what we want to do is uh, we want to identify the obstacles. So what you see is here on the one hand we have this this tree. Um, we have here on the left hand side there might be a tree. Um, then we have this, this roof here over there, and here is also a tree which might cover. And what you do is now you, you, you make a sketch uh, of this, uh, of this uh, uh, roof, of this uh, PV system and the location to identify all the obstacles which might uh, interfere with your system. So what you do is, uh, let's make this a quick sketch of this system. So we have... Um, our PV system somewhere like this. Then we have here is one tree, and we have a second tree somewhere here. And if you take a look, we have this uh, third tree somewhere here. And then we need to derive what is the distance. We have this, this roof, and um, 
uh, that's the roof of the neighboring building and uh, we, we need to know what are the heights um, and so that's the reason why you need this second um, picture. You see the tree here on the left hand side. Uh, here are this tr tree is far away. This is rather close, uh, but uh, the tree is not that problem. Even this tree is smaller than the height of our um, system. So there is no problem. We can just add the data um, to our uh, system. So on the one hand or to our sketch, that we have a height in this case uh, so let's think about the roof has a height of uh, six meters so the tree has also a height of six meters so that the height and this one is even smaller with five meters and that might be seven meters and then we need to think about what is the distance so the distance here in this case d is just uh, one meter so that's a problem that distance is smaller than one meter but the tree is still too too small that we don't get a problem now we might get a problem in, in future as the tree grows and we might get shadows somewhere here over there um, coming from this tree in the afternoon um, when the sun is somewhere here and uh, we might get shadows uh, the, the elevation angle of the sun is rather small so that uh, might be an issue in the midterm future and finally the third tree is, is rather far away so the distance from our system um, is uh, let's say uh, three or even four meters i don't know four meters so and you use this uh, this sketch to derive what are the, the obstacles which might interfere with your system and you um, use this information uh, in simulation tools for your PV system um, to uh, calculate or simulate the energy losses due to shading and to get a detailed overview uh, of your of your system and uh, that is of course uh, one important issue regarding uh, planning and uh, setting up your PV system.